ground tackle, inspection, and maintenance. Nothing promotes a good night's sleep while at anchor like robust ground tackle, except maybe the knowledge that it's also well-maintained and up to the task. Your ground tackle is literally as strong as its weakest link, and inspection should cover not only the anchor and road, but also bits, chocks, cleats, in short, any gear that's part of the system used to keep your boat securely anchored. Here's a look at how to keep your ground tackle ready, willing, and able. Let's start with the anchor itself. Are there bent flukes, shanks, or other such damage? If galvanized, is the coating in good shape, or are there areas of rust and corrosion? Another consideration is the anchor's type and size. Is it physically large enough for your boat and suitable for the type of bottom you're likely to encounter? Uh, one problem I often see while surveying boats uh, without an anchor windlass is ground tackle that's selected based on what the owner can physically manage rather than what the boat actually requires. Uh, at a minimum, you should carry a primary working anchor and a secondary anchor. I prefer the secondary anchor to be a different style than the primary to give additional options when anchoring in various bottom types. Next up is inspection of the anchor road, which should be pulled and laid out for a thorough inspection at least annually. Your anchor road would either be all chain or a combination road, which is a combination of rope and chain. If it's a combination road, how is it attached to the anchor? You can bend or attach a rope road directly to the anchor, but it's not recommended. Adding a length of chain prevents a rope road from chafing while adding weight, which increases the catenary of the road for improved shock absorption and horizontal pull, both of which help the anchor to remain set. Avoid the use of plastic or vinyl coated chain. It may be easier on your deck finish, but it can hide corrosion, particularly in salt water. As for the rope portion of the road, three-strand nylon is most commonly used. Not only is it strong, but compared to braided line, it provides more elasticity uh, to absorb the sudden loads of a boat surging around at anchor. It's also more easily spliced and cheaper than double braided line. An all-chain road can be attached directly to your anchor using an anchor shackle, which is more bell or C-shaped than a standard shackle. Uh, this is to provide greater freedom of movement and prevent binding. If there's a chance the vessel will shear or swing in circles, particularly when laying to a single anchor, then installation of an anchor swivel uh, to prevent twisting should be considered. Anchor swivels should be drop forged, not screwed, riveted, or welded together, and should be the largest size that fits the chain link without binding. Contrary to popular belief, they can also be installed backwards. Ensure that the jaw fitting of the swivel is attached to the chain and that the swivel eye is attached to the anchor shank using an anchor shackle. Some boaters don't like swivels, viewing them as a potential weak link. It's true that any moving part can fail under load if not properly designed and constructed. So if you decide to install a swivel, be sure to buy the best quality swivel you can find. With combination roads, you'll want to inspect the rope to chain connection which should be made via a rope to chain splice or by utilizing an eye splice on a thimble, which in turn should be attached to the chain portion via an anchor shackle. Eye splices are bulky, uh, more bulky than direct rope to chain splices, but are simple and reliable. They should have a minimum of six full tucks and be seized at each end while the eye is under tension to prevent the thimble from falling out should the eye stretch when placed under load. Verify that all shackles are properly seized and that their screw pins are secured or moused with stainless steel mousing wire to prevent them from unscrewing. This is a requirement for all chain roads as well. Open-ended teardrop-shaped galvanized thimbles are commonly used in anchor eye splices. However, oval or closed ear thimbles are a better choice. Teardrop thimbles can work under extreme loading, uh, potentially allowing the sharp edges of the open end to chafe the road. Uh, continue your inspection while looking for problems such as wear, cut strands, aging, discoloration, or rope hard spots caused by heat-generated friction when a kinked line is placed under load. Chafe is a rope road's worst enemy, so in addition to inspecting the road itself, check hauls holes, Chocks, cleats, windlass drums, uh, anything that comes in contact with the line for burrs, sharp edges, protruding hardware, or anything that could damage the road. Although synthetic rope fibers are resistant to most chemicals, 
You also want to avoid exposure to harsh chemicals such as acids or alkalis. All fibers will degrade over time due to UV damage, uh, due to UV light exposure, so ropes stored on decks should be covered or better yet stored below decks. For chain roads, you have to remember that while chain may be tougher than rope, it's not maintenance free. Start by storing your chain clean and keeping it as dry as possible, which both reduces corrosion and helps keep the unhygienic smell of Davy Jones's gym locker from your vessel interior. Giving both locker and chain an occasional fresh water wash down helps with the above while also letting you verify that the locker drains properly. Avoid exposing your chain to preventable chafe, such as can occur when pulling it along a uh, concrete dock when you're laying it out for inspection. Dragging your chain over abrasive surfaces removes the galvanized coating and eventually leads to rusting. Chain should be swapped in for in annually to promote even wear of the galvanized coating. It should be regalvanized once significant rust begins to appear. However, the general consensus is this should only be done twice, after which the chain should be replaced. Chain manufacturers don't recommend regalvanizing, and while this say, may seem a bit self-serving, the process of removing rust and prepping the chain does actually weaken it to a degree, which is where the only do it twice thing comes in. If your chain road contains a splice, the three most common are riveted joining link, the double jaw mid link, and a quick connect link. Never splice sections of chain using bolts or spikes to join the links. The riveted chain link is a permanent splice uh, that looks and functions like any link in the chain if it's sized and installed properly. The double jaw mid link is roughly the same size of a normal link of chain as well but unlike the riveted link, it's removable and can be used for both temporary and permanent splices. Quick connect links should be viewed only as a temporary splice. They can be used in a pinch, but should be replaced with a riveted link or a double jaw mid link as soon as possible. Quick connect links are also harder for your windlass to handle as they're roughly 60% larger than the links of chain they're sized for. Chain shackles are another option used to join shots or links of chain. Uh, true chain shackles are U-shaped, allowing them to act more like a chain link, as opposed to the bell-shaped anchor shackles mentioned earlier. Chain roads should be pulled and laid out for a full inspection annually, depending on use, but also after exposure to severe loading. The load applied to a chain road isn't very high under normal conditions. However, damage can occur under moderate loading as well, such as when the chain is wrapped around an object a rock or a wreck, and placed under tension. If you find your chain slipping or jumping out of the windless wildcat, the chain wheel, uh, more than it typically has in the past, it could be a sign some of the links have been damaged and the chain may need replacing. Finally, don't forget that an all-chain road requires the use of an elastic bridle or nylon snubber when deployed to act as a shock absorber between anchor and vessel. If you've ever wondered why the end of your anchor road is called the bitter end, it's because you'll be mighty bitter if it goes overboard. Your ground tackle inspection should verify that the bitter end of your anchor road is attached to the vessel. This attachment point isn't meant to bear the load of anchoring, but rather to prevent accidental loss of the anchoring road. A combination road can be tied directly to your boat, uh, typically at some point in the anchor locker. Uh, the bitter end of an all chain road can be secured with small line or better yet, multiple turns of tarred nylon lashing, which can be easily cut with a knife if you need to slip the anchor or add additional road. For both, make sure the line is long enough to reach past the deck hauls hole for ease of access while on deck. Next up, you're going to inspect all your deck hardware um, associated with anchoring. Check anything that comes in contact with the anchor road. As we've discussed earlier, cleats, bits, chocks, fair leads. You want to check all these for broken or damaged parts, looseness, or any issues that could damage the road or cause it to fail under anchoring loads. Uh, access and inspect mounting hardware for leaks, which can lead to deterioration and loss of strength, corrosion, improperly sized or missing backing plates, washers, and damaged or missing components. Finally, don't forget the windlass. If you have an anchor windlass, uh, it should be viewed as an important part of your ground tackle system. Show your windlass a little love by inspecting it as well for any issues. Start by checking the windlass for corrosion or physical damage. 
uh, inspect mounting hardware for looseness, movement, corrosion, and leaks into the vessel interior. Leaks are often caused by a uh, broken bedding seal, which is typically the result of a windlass being overstressed. Inspect electrical connections for corrosion or charring as a result of arcing. Uh, you also want to disassemble and clean corroded connections after securing power, of course, uh, with a wire brush and electrical cleaner. Vinegar works good in a pinch. Uh, terminals and post connections should be clean and tight. Uh, coating them with dielectric grease and installing insulating rubber boots will protect against corrosion and accidental shorting. For units with the motor and gearbox located below decks, check the casing regularly for rust, uh, corrosion, and any such issues like that. Most are constructed of painted steel and will readily corrode in the damp environment of the anchor locker. Address such corrosion immediately to prevent it from worsening. You also want to inspect your foredeck switches for damage and proper operation. Ensure the hinged covers are in place to prevent accidental operation and that the covers themselves uh, operate easily and have a good seal when closed. Check the rubber diaphragms for cracks, tears, or deterioration, and you can spray them regularly with a UV shield such as a 303 Aerospace Protectant or something along those lines that will extend their service life. It's also a good idea to keep the windlass covered when not in use uh, to protect it from salt corrosion and UV exposure. Finally, use the windlass regularly to keep all internal gears lubricated. Grease and lube oil tend to settle at the bottom of the gearbox, resulting in dry sections of gears that could be prone to rust. If at the dock or hauled, crank the windlass over a few turns every couple of weeks. Uh, in closing, I'd like to just remind you that inspecting your ground tackle may not be the most glamorous way to spend an afternoon, uh, but when the wind starts to howl and you're securely anchored in that snug cove, you'll look back on it with fond memories.